Despite dramatic regional changes, Jordan remains of strategic importance to Israel's security. The Hashemite Kingdom is often seen as an artificial energy poor state, surrounded by hostile and more powerful neighbours. Still, it has been a key element in the American and Israeli security concepts for the region for over half a century. Jordan is also the custodian of Muslim and Christian holy places in East Jerusalem, according to a joint Israeli-Jordanian agreement. But Amman did not demonstrate any initiatives to protect the Palestinians after the Israeli police stormed the Al-Aqsa Mosque in May 2021. Why does Jordan refrain from any escalation in the region and how does the Jewish state benefit from energy deals with the Hashemite Kingdom? I'm your host Kasim and thanks for joining me for another KJ Report. This is the fourth episode in a series of videos where we carefully examine why the neighbouring Muslim countries do not act against Israel during times of escalation and early this year during the recent conflict. Just before we start, please kindly visit our website kjreports.com and subscribe to one of our plans which will give you unlimited access to all of our videos and geopolitical content. As Hussein of Jordan, the country's former king, once pointed out, the Hashemite Kingdom has a very important part in any Arab-Israeli peace process. Over the past few decades, Jordan has not entered into any alliance with a country hostile to Israel. Moreover, Amman keeps Israel's eastern border safe even when conflicts and instability in Lebanon, Syria and Iraq exact a toll on its own eastern and northern borders. Also, Jordan has reportedly permitted Israeli jets to fly through its airspace to carry out bombing sorties against Iranian targets in Syria. In the past, however, Jordan was not only a vocal critic of Israel, but also one of the major supporters of the Palestinian cause. It is worth noting that around half of Jordan's 10 million strong population is of Palestinian origin, including some 2.2 million refugees registered with the United Nations. They or their parents were expelled or fled to Jordan in the fighting that accompanied the creation of Israel in 1948. On March the 15th, 1972, King Hussein revealed his plan for a United Arab Kingdom which would be a federation consisting of two federal districts, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan and a Palestinian federal district which would be located in the West Bank region that was under Jordanian control between 1948 and 1967 and that would have East Jerusalem as its capital. According to the proposal, the two districts of the Federation would be autonomous except for the military affairs, foreign affairs and security affairs that would be run by a central government located in Amman. Nowadays, Jordan's leadership rejects any talk of any form of confederation between Jordan and Palestine before an independent Palestinian state becomes a reality. In other words, Jordanian leaders are quite aware that the two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is wishful thinking and that they have to develop strong economic ties with the Jewish state, no matter how unpopular such processes are for the majority of the Jordanian population. The country is heavily dependent on the United States and Washington is strongly pushing Amman to normalise relations with its western neighbour. The US has designated Jordan as a major non-NATO ally which puts Amman in a very difficult position vis-a-vis -vis Israel, a country many see as America's 51st state. The very fact that the US President Joe Biden's first call with an Arab leader was with King Abdullah II clearly illustrates the importance of Jordan for the United States. In January 2021, the US and Jordan signed a controversial defence cooperation agreement. The main terms of the deal state that the US forces may carry weapons on Jordanian territory while conducting their missions and may transport and stock equipment and supplies. The agreement also allows the US personnel, their aircraft and ships to freely enter and exit Jordanian territory without applying for a visa. Jordanian opposition strongly criticised the agreement claiming that it represents new colonialism and control over the state's facilities as a whole. The opposition also strongly condemned several deals the country's leadership signed with the State of Israel which puts Amman in a position to balance between a strong anti-Israel sentiment at home and a not so favourable geopolitical reality. According to the International Crisis Group analysis, 
Jordanians have been concerned that Israel and leading Gulf Arab countries such as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are giving lesser weight to Jordan's geopolitical importance. Since Saddam Hussein's ousting in 2003, Israeli leaders see less of a threat coming from armies in the east and thus tend to minimise Jordan's role as a potential buffer against a conventional army in the foreseeable future. Israel's real strategic depth lies in enhancing its regional legitimacy and acceptance via diplomatic agreements that in turn ensure that large areas adjacent to Israel remain free of hostile forces, said the International Crisis Group report. Jordan lacks any national fossil fuel wealth and is highly dependent on fossil fuel imports. The nation imports about 95% of its energy needs with demand for electricity that rises by 6-7% to annually. Although both Israel and Jordan are currently dependent on imported crude oil to meet their energy needs, they have begun developing strategies to increase the amount of renewable energy they can produce. According to reports, Israel is even considering buying solar power from Jordan. EcoPeace, an organisation of Israeli, Jordanian and Palestinian environmentalists, has been pushing for the project, arguing that Jordan's access to large amounts of land and sunshine means it could sell electricity to Israel cheaper than the country could produce it. However, the process of switching from traditional to renewable energy may last for decades. Meanwhile, Amman is trying to resolve its gas supplies issues. In 2020, Texas-based Noble Energy has begun pumping the first supplies of Israeli gas to Jordan, while in 2016, Jordan's national electricity company signed a $10 billion deal with Noble Energy to supply the Hashemite Kingdom with gas for 15 years from the field in the Mediterranean. The deal has faced opposition in Jordan, where many view Israel as an arch enemy. After the agreement was signed, the Jordanian government said that securing stable energy prices for the next decade can achieve annual savings of at least $500 million annually and help reduce a chronic budget deficit. Amman has reportedly pushed through the deal despite the popular opposition by politicians and many deputies in parliament who say it makes the country dependent on Israel for energy. Jordan already heavily depends on water supply from Israel. Under the 1994 Wada Arabi Peace Agreement, Israel pumps water out of the Jordanian River and transfers it back to Jordan during dry spells, as it remains one of the world's most water-scarce states. In 2015, the two countries signed an agreement to implement a World Bank-sponsored project and build a desalination plant in the Gulf of Aqaba as well as a pipeline linking the Red Sea with the Dead Sea. The plant should be built in the southern Jordanian port of Aqaba on the Red Sea and will desalinate water to be shared by Israelis and Palestinians and the project will cost around $900 million. Jordanian officials said the two projects were crucial to providing a source of fresh water to the kingdom which faces a severe water deficit and to reviving the shrinking Dead Sea. Besides water, it is believed that new gas discoveries in the eastern Mediterranean can be leveraged to create interdependencies between Jordan, Israel and Palestine. Presently, around 90% of the total electricity consumption in the Palestinian territories is provided by Israel and the remaining 10% is provided by Jordan and Egypt. The creation of an integrated energy economy between Israel, Jordan, Egypt and Palestine can anchor lasting and mutually beneficial economic interdependencies. Israel already has a preferential trade agreement with Jordan, although in 2019 the kingdom's exports to Israel were $108 million, which is a small amount given that the country's total exports reached $8.91 billion in 2019. The two countries, however, reportedly made important arrangements to facilitate Jordanian exports of regular goods via Haifa's port after Syrian land routes closed due to war. Indeed, Israel has grandiose plans for connecting its Haifa port to the regional railway grid, in particular in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, and they depend entirely on Amman's cooperation. In spite of ambitious economic plans that could reshape the region, relations between Israel and Jordan have been at a low point since at least 2017, when an Israeli security officer in Amman killed two Jordanians. Tensions sharpened significantly in recent months after Crown Prince Hussein announced his desire to visit the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. 
Israel agreed but then cancelled at the last moment. Jordan responded by refusing to let Netanyahu use Jordanian airspace to fly to Abu Dhabi. During the May 2021 clashes between Israel and Hamas, Jordanian lawmakers unanimously carried a motion urging the government to expel Israel's ambassador to Amman in protest against Israeli crimes against Palestinians. Lawmakers also demanded the recall of Jordan's ambassador from Tel Aviv. Prime Minister Bashir Kaswani, who was present in parliament, said the government will examine all the options and will rise to the challenge. Given that Amman depends on Israeli water and gas supplies and is strongly pressured by the United States not to make any radical moves, it is no surprise that Jordan did not additionally strain its relations with the Jewish state. The Israeli-Jordanian rift is expected to grow if Israel eventually annexes the Jordan Valley or any other part of the occupied West Bank. That's all for today guys, thanks for watching another KJ Report. I hope you enjoyed the video and would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please don't forget to visit our website kjreports.com and sign up to our subscription plan which will give you access to all of our geopolitical content. Thanks for all your continued support and for continuing to watch KJ Reports. See you next time.